As you've already seen in some of the other Power Series videos, it takes a lot of mathematical and algebraic manipulation to take a function that kind of looks like a function that we have a series for and try to represent it correctly as a series. Um, so we dealt a little bit with rational functions, um, but there were rational functions of a specific form, uh, 1 over 1 minus x, okay, or I think of it as 1 over 1 minus the input. And they can be written as a geometric series, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on, as long as the x values you're working with are between negative 1 and 1. Okay, um, anyway, so I want to show you uh, an example of uh, one that's maybe a little bit more complicated. We've looked at things like 2 over 1 minus x, where you could just multiply the whole series by 2, 2 plus 2x plus 2x squared, and, and so on. Uh, we've looked at things where maybe it was 1 over 1 plus x, and you could write it as 1 over 1 minus negative x, and you could put a negative x in for each of those terms, and, and you could get it to work out. Uh, one of the cases we didn't look at is what happens if there's a different number here, uh, something other than 1? And the answer is you still need to get your function back into the form 1 over 1 minus your input, okay? That has to happen every single time. Um, and so we have to find a way to write that without the 4, okay? Um, so if you remember, it's, it's a very similar strategy to what we did if we had like a 6 up here or something like that. You could just factor a number out of the numerator. You can also factor a number out of the denominator, but things are going to be a little bit more complicated here because you have two terms in the denominator. So I want a 1 in that position, okay? I'm going to factor out a 1 fourth, okay? I'm going to factor a 4 out of the denominator. That's not going to affect the numerator. Uh, if I factor a 4 out of the denominator, I'm dividing 4 by 4, that's going to give me 1, which is exactly what I want. Unfortunately, I've got to divide this by 4 as well, and that's going to give me uh, minus 1 fourth x, or I could write that as, as x over 4. So notice, if you multiply this back out, 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 1 fourth x is negative x. Okay, so this, this is just another way of writing the same function. Okay, so we're going to write this as 1 fourth times 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth. So you've got a constant out in front. Okay, um, and notice it's 1 over 1 minus an input. 1 over 1 minus x over 4. x over 4 is going to end up being your new input. Okay, so your series normally would be 1 plus the input. The input is changing to x over 4, okay, plus the input squared, okay, so our input here is uh, x over 4, and that's being squared, okay, plus your input cubed, okay, that's going to be x over 4 cubed, and uh, of course this is going to continue on out to infinity, okay. So you could go ahead and multiply this through, and, and you could write this as 1 fourth plus x over 16 plus x squared over... Uh, what would that be, 64, and so on. You could do that sort of thing. Uh, if you need the general term, you might want to go back to the original setup. Uh, the original setup uh, is that this is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Okay? We've done several things here. Uh, each term is going to get multiplied by 1 fourth. So you could say, well, it's going to be 1 fourth x to the n. And our input was no longer x, it's an x to the fourth. So instead of an x there, it's going to be an x over 4 being taken to the n power, okay? And uh, you can kind of work this out. You can write that as x to the n uh, over 4 to the n, and you could distribute that through the, uh, the fraction there. And the whole thing is being multiplied by 1 fourth, so you could also go ahead and, and multiply. You've got a 4 to the first being multiplied by a 4 to the n. Uh, you could write this as x to the n over 4 to the n plus 1. It would probably be the best way to write it. And again, uh, once you do it that way, I would go back and check and see, you know, are you actually getting uh, terms of the series that you thought you were supposed to get? Um, and so anyway, if you look at this series here, that would be 1 fourth plus x over 16 plus x squared over 64 and so on if you distributed that 1 fourth through. Okay, and uh, notice here, if n was 0, we get x to the 0, uh, we'd get 4. Uh, if x was 1, sorry, if n was 1, we'd get x to the first, 
uh, over four squared, which is 16. And I think you're gonna see that the series does work out, okay? So you can get some things that, that look relatively strange. Um, you know, just to do something particularly bad here, let's uh, say we had something like f of x is equal to, uh, let's do three over, um, well, let's do something like uh, two plus five x, something like that. Okay, uh, first of all, you want a one here, you want a one here, and you want a minus there, and then whatever your input is is, is gonna end up being there. So first of all, I'd write that as two minus a negative five x, okay? A um, Couple of things, you've got a three that needs to be factored out of the top, uh, and you need to have a one in that position there, so you're gonna have to factor a two out of the bottom. And what that's gonna leave you with in your fraction uh, you'll have a 1 on top when you factor a 3 out. Uh, if you divide this by 2, you're going to be left with a 1. If you divide this by 2, you're going to be left with negative 5 halves x. Okay, and again, this should equal this. So we need 1 over 1 minus the input. I've got 1 over 1 minus the input. Um, and if you multiply this, you get 3 on top. If you multiply here, uh, you're, you're going to get this on the bottom. So again, you just have that three halves constant out in the front being multiplied, and your input value is going to be negative five halves x. Okay, that's going in place of that x right there. So you're replacing your input with negative five halves x in each of those positions. Okay, so it's going to be one plus the input. Input's negative five halves x. Okay, plus the input squared. Okay inputs negative 5 halves x, and it's being squared, uh, plus the input cubed, it's going to be negative 5 halves x, and that's going to continue on out to infinity, okay? And again, uh, this one is, is intentionally just messy. Um, anyway, you're going to end up with 1 minus 5 halves x, uh, that would be plus 25 fourths x squared, uh, the minus That'd be 125 over 8x cubed, and so on. And then that whole thing is being multiplied by 3 halves out in front. So you could distribute that through, and it's going to get real ugly at that point. Not saying this is common. I'm just saying, you know, worst case scenario, this is the way this would work. Uh, if you're trying to get the general term, again, normally the general term would be x to the n, okay? Uh, we have multiplied the whole thing by 3 halves, so each term would get multiplied by 3 halves. Instead of an x as my input, I have a negative 5 halves x. Okay, and again, you could kind of simplify that down some. Uh, for example, you could write that as negative 1 times 5 halves times x. Each of those is being taken to the n power. So you'd have that negative 1 to the n out in front. Uh, you'd have a 5 halves being taken to the n power, which might be like a 5 to the n over a 2 to the n, and then you'd have an x to the n. And then the whole thing's being multiplied by 3 halves. Uh, so actually, you'd probably have the 3 halves out in front like that. And anyway, it would get real ugly real fast. I'm not, I'm not saying you're ever going to see an example quite like that, but I think all the tools that you would need to be able to figure these out should show up in the previous, as, uh, should show up in the previous examples. So hopefully that helps some for some of the more challenging problems.